good evening and a very... What are you doing there? I didn't know you'd start. I'm just washing my hands. Oh, there we go. There you go. Good evening and welcome to the Crash Roots Weekend Show. I'm Mal and we have... Liv, hello. Who are hosts for this evening. Rather than myself, just not me. Now, you probably see the back of me most of the time because Liv is going to be one of our great presenters and I'm sure you've seen it on the shows before. There she goes. Welcome to the show, Liv. What have we got to talk about tonight? Tell our listeners, our viewers as well, please. So there's many things we can talk about. It's the lockdown and how everyone's getting on and what's happening since we've been in lockdown and how everyone's getting on. Well, the thing is, now we haven't had a, you're the first referee since on the show, since the lockdown. Now, obviously, it's all getting a little bit back to normality, slowly but surely. Slowly, yeah. Yeah, so you haven't had any referee. And the coaching's back, as we know, we sell five kids, one coach. Fantastic. That's, you know, what have you been doing while the lockdown's been on to keep yourself fit? But first of all, can I just ask you, are you going back into refereeing when grassroots football starts? I'm definitely going back. And I feel like most refs that, because we've, we've had such a long time off, I feel like most of them are going to be like, no, I can't be bothered going to do that, so I'm just going to just not carry on. But I'm the opposite, and I totally want to carry on and hopefully progress to the next levels. Well, we, we're worrying a little bit because off camera there before we were talking about maybe there's going to be a lot of referees um, who have decided they can't wait till next season. Now they give up, they, they were loving it, but they put it to the wayside now and they decided to do something else. Is that the worry do you think we might have? I reckon it will be, but I think if we continue to progress in the county FA, continue doing more referee course, we'll get so much more in and they'll help us be able to carry on with the grassroots. And I can go around and I can still monitor all the referees, can't I? I can be all your mentors like I have been doing with you. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yes, Fantastically yeah. well, you know, because uh, <laughs> you've done great. And to be honest, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about worrying about referees, not, uh, young referees especially. I think there'll be a lot of young referees, but maybe experienced referees have just said, that's it for me, I'm not having it anymore. That is probably a big worry because you see a lot of experienced referees in the game as well, don't you? Yeah, like, it's just... Excuse me, just having a sip of tea, by the way. You know, yeah, Mal, just okay. sip of tea. You've got your water, I've got my tea. Black tea. What were we talking about? Referees, experienced referees, okay. in the game. I can't even remember what I was going to say then, Matt. You took my moment then, Matt. I'm really, really sorry, you know me, but uh, <laughs> we're on YouTube, we're on, you know, DXTL TV from the Touchlands. From the Touchlands, but we're not on the Touchlands, aren't we? Because it's confusing. Because what would you be doing this Saturday? or even last night, prepared and ready for the game if it was on a grassroots football day? Well, we'd have started getting ready, getting all excited for the morning to uh, to do the ref in and mm -hmm. watch our soccer Saturday and see if uh, the derbies or anything's going to go on. Yeah, with the Premier excited League as well, yeah, yeah. What do you think is going to happen, Mike? Because obviously we're going behind closed doors. Well, not us, but Premier League teams. Obviously they're going behind closed doors. So what do you think it's going to be like? Do you think the atmosphere is going to be different? And well, uh, what, what it is, Liv, uh, that's, that's, I'll tell you a little story about uh, Premier League behind closed doors. Because yeah, yeah. the Bundesliga, <laughs> now this is what I've done. And I said to our viewers and our listeners the other day, but obviously I didn't mention it to you. And you were, you've asked the question about what do you think it's going to be like. Bundesliga, we've all been watching that since it started. And before it started and the lockdown came, I asked it, well, I sent a message to Liverpool Football Club saying, look, if we get home games here, I've watched a couple of Champions League games in lockdown and they were the most boring things I'd seen because there was no spectators. They were, it was empty, empty stadiums and you just thought, it's a Sunday league game without any spectators and we get more spectators on Sunday league. So I asked them, is it any possible way that they could put over the tannoy, the crowd, the atmosphere, that the players will think crowd's still there, okay we've got empty stands, empty seats, but this is the, the message I gave them. And would you believe Liverpool Football Club said they'd never heard of it before, but they'd certainly put it round the, the offices and, and, and find out what the comebacks would be like. So I think and I'd love to see all Premier League teams, even Sky Sports League, putting some sort of atmosphere on. What's your thoughts? How would you like to watch a game like that? Well, if I was, if I put my shoes in the players' boots, that myself, sorry, in the players' boots, then it'd be different because usually when they've got the fans cheering and you've got the away fans, it gives you the confidence and it gives you a bit more cockiness, which yeah. maybe you can feel a bit more better. So I think having like 
empty stand, it's going to be completely different. And then, like, it's just going to, I think it's going to play big. It's going to have a big effect on the players themselves. But from us watching it, it's going to be so different because it's literally going to be the players. You'll probably even hear them talk and say, go on, pass the ball and stuff, which is going to be, you might even hear the managers <laughs> having the shout at them. Well, well, you know, as a young referee now, you've seen this players, their attitudes when they were towards the referees as a referee. Um, I think we talked about it in grassroots football when you were there. Um, when you saw the players' lips and everyone knew <laughs> what they were saying. It's offensive sometimes, isn't it? But it, it drowned that out because the worry is if they play in the Premier League in empty stadiums and they do get carried away, we're all going to hear these swear words, aren't we? Yeah. Kids, it's going to affect the kids. You're going to hear them even louder. So maybe it is time to add something, as we say, a message to Sky Sports, a message to all the football clubs themselves. See what sort of atmosphere you can put to generate a little bit more excitement while we're watching the Premier League, even though we're all excited that the Premier League's coming back. Yeah, just give it a, a more positive way of football, not have it so negative. Mm -hmm. when If there was that language or something, like an argument between the two players, just have it a positive way and show kids that are growing up to be wanting to be professional, just like it's a it's a team sport and you don't need to have arguments and stuff. Well you've chose refereeing, I mean, because it, obviously you're going to be physio, you're going to combine that, which is great news because you're the top referee, this is my opinion. <laughs> you don't like anyone saying that, I know you just get on with your game. But for a young referee, I think absolutely brilliant. And the County FA are going to be really, really pleased to have you on board with them because we've got a little bit of a surprise on me that um, we're going to tell our listeners now, <laughs> a little bit later on, just to keep the flow, the, the, the flow of the show going. But you see referees in the Premier League or in the professional game. What's your thoughts being a young referee when these players are barely abused and basically the referee are swearing at them? What do you feel for that referee who's in charge of that game yourself? Well, from my point of view or from... Your point of view? Well, it's definitely, it lowers your confidence so much and then once it's lowered your confidence, then it's like, do I want to carry on with the game? Do I want to start sending people off? Which is obviously one of the regulations that you must stick to. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's just like, because it makes you want to reconsider being a ref. Do I want to leave because everyone, what everyone's saying, am I a terrible ref? But it's just, you just have to get on with it. Have your blind, blind ears, deaf ears, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you just don't want to listen to them. One. Yeah, they're not where you're coming from. Because, <laughs> <laughs> shut it now. Well, who, who, who inspires you more as a Premier League referee to keep you going then? It's not who, it's mainly the female refs more than anything mm -hmm. because as football, it's, la it's labelled as a boys' sport, so we want to show off, sort of, sorry, I can't speak properly, sort of. Because like, you're on camera, really. yeah. that's all it is, yeah. We want to sort of like show that it shouldn't be labelled a boys' sport, and every gender can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mainly like Shan Massey and Magda, who's also with the County FA. She's, I've spoke to her, and she's... Helen Byrne as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, Helen Byrne, I know she's married now, so <laughs> I used to know her as Helen Byrne anyway. So yeah, it, it's definitely having the the female um, refs that are showing showing the different ways that and like the yeah. and, and that's your goal, isn't it? That's your aim now. You want to um, improve yourself, don't you? Would you yeah. would you one day like to to officiate in the uh, Premier League? Yeah, game? definitely. But it's it's scary to hear that the stuff like even when you're at a game. Like I've been at a few games and so I've heard everyone's like saying. Like disagreeing with the refs, mm -hmm. what their decision. So, but like, I feel like once you've got into that stage and because you've had all that experience, I feel like you're just gonna, you're just gonna get on with it. And obviously, it's a one of the, it's like a thing that referees must deal with. It's like yeah. everyone has their own opinions and they're obviously gonna disagree and they're not gonna like what you, what you like, what your decision was. So it's gonna be one of them where you just have to deal with it and get on with it so you can. It's just one of them, isn't it? But it hasn't put you off. No. Great, great. So we're definitely going to see you well, whenever grassroots football is allowed to go again because the, everything's changing so much, isn't it? We, we all yeah. worry about how is the game going to be? Is it going to be three sides? Is it, you know, we, we just don't know, do we? <laughs> it's definitely going to be slower. Like I know I've put on weight through this lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing while you've been on lockdown, training, keeping fit, wise? Um, so I've been on a couple of runs, which obviously it isn't much, but <laughs> it's 
it's just a way of getting fit because we don't know how fit these um, players are going to be. So. <laughs> oh yeah, well the young kids very very fit indeed. You know they yeah. run round everywhere and very very fast. But you've got to keep up. You don't need to challenge yourself. So yeah. you're going to keep up with the kids anyway. So. But I am hoping to hopefully go to the offside level, so I will need a bit more. Well, I've got the pace. Yeah. Not gonna. I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to be like. Like, I just want to learn more stuff to get into that, um, hopefully the top tier roles of like officiating. But like, I definitely want to do the offside and stuff because it's like learning new stuff and it's it's not a job for me. It's more of a hobby, which is something that you should. It's a key in like working. Yeah. It's not like working, but like, well, it's you, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I can't put it in words here. But, yeah. Like, but you enjoyed the money side of things, you know, because you. The money your... side is a positive thing, but I don't really like. Like, obviously, it's a good thing having money, but it's mainly teaching kids and not just kids. Developing but like, the skills, yeah. Yeah, and I get taught a lot. Like, even though I don't play football anymore, I'm seeing new skills or different ways of how to improve myself with football. So it's not just improving as a referee; it's improving my fitness or different like ways of shooting and stuff. I know one of the kids that on um, half time, we literally went and done some shooting while we were waiting for the other team. And the, one of the things they taught me was how to do a proper rainbow flick. So I thought it just goes, it's, he basically taught me how to get the proper height, which is one of like the key things that I've ever done as a ref, like just learning the football side. And I think one of the most important things is having a good communication with the kids, because like they can trust you and like, Having that trust is definitely one of the, the key key points in football. Yeah. So. Well, you do gain a lot of trust from the kids as well. I must admit, they respect you because you keep up with the game, and you explain to them about all the decisions. And and because I've watched and watched and mentored you, as well as other referees, that it was a little surprise that I give you, wasn't it? Because the uh, recommendation went in to yeah, the county FA did. for you, <laughs> and basically they're gonna have a little closer look at you, and they're gonna. Give you the help and hands, aren't they? And yes. it's going to help you generate more skills, develop more skills for you. More confidence as well. And you're so excited to be going and meeting them as soon as everything's back to normal, a little bit of normal with the county FA because uh, it really inspired you a little bit more, didn't it? Because you're on lockdown, you're wondering, oh, you know, I'm missing the refereeing, not the paydays, just the refereeing, keeping yourself fit. And when this news are brought to you, I think you're a little bit. Uh, yeah, gobsmacked definitely because it's like I'm. It's like when I first joined, I thought it was going to be something where I'm getting money from, mm -hmm. which could like benefit me doing other stuff. And then since I've learned it, I've learned a load of new skills. It's become a hobby more than a job, and it's just like it's like giving me like from now that I've learned how it can like help me in the future, mm -hmm. like. I thought, yeah, as I just said, I thought it was just going to be a little, a little job for me. But no, it's turned into a big hobby now, and it's, it's definitely playing a big factor in my life because I definitely yeah. want to take it further, which is I think which is really good. But hopefully, we can get other girls and younger kids um, into wrestling, which is a good which point. is great news, and I'm over the moon for you because you've really, really worked hard, and, and to be honest, twelve months of refereeing, I can see the big time. This is my honest opinion, you, the big time for you. You have every attribute that a referee has. We're going to get many more referees in there, and we are hoping because you're a young ambassador for Don't Cross the Line. You've taken that role on as well because you really enjoy the work that we do, and it really you'd appreciate it. And um, we're hoping in the very near future to have a Premier League, ex Premier League referee in here, the <laughs> name of Chris Foy, that you'll be interviewing as well. And there's a lot of questions you put down to me. Obviously, you were supposed to do this before the lockdown. But well, you're looking forward to that as well because my, the knowledge is just exceptional that you have and what you want to learn and what you want to develop and you're excited about this interview as well. Yeah, like, as I just discussed like when I first thought it's just going to be a job isn't it but now that I'm learning and meeting other people from because the campaign that you, you run is obviously helping me a lot and now that I'm going to meet a professional a, a, a really good professional yeah. like obviously I'm, I can learn load more stuff and it's just it's a, a better way of how where I can get to the top tier which is but you'd also had a little message of a certain Will Cup referee and then Mr Keith Hackett yeah. didn't you um, who's 
praise you and wish you all the best of luck. And well, he is watching. I like, watch all the posts, and I think many of these ex Premier Le referees and Premier League referees are already watching how you're developing your skills as well, which is only going to be exciting for more referees like yourself coming into the game because it's probably it, it hasn't gone over your head. It hasn't. You're just excited. You just you, you just appreciate it more, don't you? Yeah, definitely. It's just a way of getting getting to where I want to be with repping and yeah. <laughs> the only problem that I find that you, you know being an Evertonian are is you, are you having a laugh, man? <laughs> but you know, Everton, Evertonian. No, I am having a laugh because Gosh. Everton work closely with don't cross the line and Liverpool as well, and you know we love our banter, don't we? And that's the way. We, we, we appreciate banter in grassroots football. We try to. We try to, don't we? And put a message for Ivy parents who are thinking, now the lockdown's over, when we get these games coming back, what would you like to say to some of these Ivy parents on the touchlines and spectators and managers, of course? Yeah, um, I think for the first for the first couple of games, or like the first week, it's just remember, the ref hasn't ref for God knows how long. They're going to be slow and a bit chubby, maybe. But just remember that the kids haven't played in a while, so don't, as I've said this so many times, don't criticise the ref for doing their job when they're not criticising the parents or guardians, whatever. So just let the ref get on with it and just, just let the game flow because it's ruining, it's ruining football, really. Yeah, we, we will have to make sure that don't cross the line and open the ball and just turn away to the spectators, which we do a great job. And as I say, you know, we're over the moon that you decided to become a young ambassador and you will be getting your certificate very, very <laughs> soon because we forgot all about it, didn't we, Liv, that young kid, we did. Don't know how you can forget about me, but... No, no, because <laughs> you're also becoming a young presenter with us as well, so uh, that's exciting times. Tell us a bit about um, what you missed in the lockdown, your schooling. Yeah, um, in fact, my school, uh, North Liverpool Academy, if no one knows them, they've been really, like, help, like supportive and they've helped, like... Um, We've been getting many work done and I think most people, um, maybe they don't have the education, which I'm really thankful for that I've got it and that I can get to where I want to go, which is, I think it's really good, but um, yeah, it's definitely helped me. Cause I you want to study more as well, don't you? Yeah, you? definitely. So. So we've got a couple more minutes left on the show, so uh, anything else you want to put to the viewers, to the listeners, Liv? To the referees? Wash your hands. Ah, yes. There you go. Come on, we, we've got we've got our own deal off of this. We, we do have our own, so we we all keep the social distancing as well. And don't forget, when you're on camera, it looks like we're only sitting about two inches away, but we're not. Two meters. Yeah, definitely. And I think what's happening soon, maybe the one meter is coming. So I don't really know what's what's happening on that. I don't one, really want to get close to Mal anyway. It's a bit smelly. There you go. See, so I've got a great message there now. And off camera, you just wait off camera. Anyway, we've got a lovely room, haven't we, a studio? We've got ample room to fit the guests in. Um, we'll have two or three guests probably coming in. We've got a nice reception. Well, you tell our viewers and listeners about it as well, because you'll be coming a presenter. Yes. And um, what we're looking forward to when we get guests in. I think our, our main like thing that we're most looking forward to is just getting people in and hear different opinions and ways that we can sort of work around that. And then um, just having like, new topics, because like, I know we're... There's like, we do so much show as well, you do so much shows, and it's starting to get a bit boring, so maybe if we had the people, like, even if you're, there's um, an, is it an email, so if you do yeah. it at info at don't x the line dot co dot uk, we can just sort of plan something better so that our viewers can have a better, like a different... Understanding of it, yeah. and, and they can get in touch with us and we can give answers when we do our show, deal. because... I know, I think you're back in school just for 20 minutes or so. It's only 20 minutes, yeah. So next week, but we'll have you on the show more now because, as I say, you know, you say, I'm, I'm the role model for Don't Cross the Line everywhere. But it is lovely to have the likes of Liv coming on the show, young blood on the show, going to take over the show. I know for a fact she's going to be booking her own guests in, especially now as you give the email out, so you can make that attention to Liv which is info at don'ttextheline.co.uk. Get in touch with her. Let her know your opinion, what thoughts you've got as a referee. If you want to become a referee, simple. Liv will give you all the answers, how to get involved in it. Simply as well, just get in touch with your local county FA. Is that right, Liv? What was the faces for there? What was that? Come on. That's a lovely face. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
she's she catchy fires have answered all these questions now. Well. <laughs> but when you come on the show, you can you can read out the emails, and we can say, or oh, we've got a, a quick message from so and so and so. We want to become a referee, or we may have referees who say, do you know what, Liv? I haven't been bike riding. I haven't done any running round. You have. I haven't been keeping fit. I think that's one message to all referees and even players. Go for runs now because we're not going to be fit. I can tell you that now. Well, all that chocolate and bacon I've done, ate and done and. Ah, you, you do well because you're telling me now you, you're cutting down on your food, you're not drinking <laughs> waters now. We all know she's cheating a bit, you know, folks. She is. She's keeping really, really fit. And let's just hope, fingers crossed, that we've got some football matches coming up very soon. We know the Premier League starts next week. Something to look forward to. So just a message to all our listeners and all our viewers as well. Live before we close the show. Would you like to close the show, or am I closing the show? You can do it. It's your show at the moment. Oh, at the moment. Over. Yeah. So I don't want to see a lot of spotlight yet. Yeah. So just wash your hands, kids. See, see, <laughs> and adults, and adults. Oh yeah, and adults. Yeah, you are all right in here because we're all suppliers. If you've got the gloves, you've got the masks. If you need a mask, I don't know. But hey ho, we've come to the end of another show with us. Enjoy your Saturday. Put your feet up. Have a glass of wine. Have a glass of water. Enjoy. <laughs> Look what she's doing. There you go. And I've got one myself, and I'll be using that very, very soon indeed. So thank you very much indeed for tuning in to the Grassroots Weekender Show, DXTL TV from the Touchlands. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. So for myself, Mal Lee, all the team here at the Grassroots Show. Mike Henderson. There we go. <laughs> and Rich Beck Ken Payne. We will see you tomorrow night at 7. In the meantime, wash enjoy and wash your hands. Good night. God bless.